I get asked all the time about how to get into robotics or even how kids can start to learn some of these skills. Today, we're gonna to look at a really low cost way to get some hands-on experience with AI and robotics. This is more of a teaching learning video compared to my normal content. But don't worry, we'll be back to the cutting edge robotic nonsense in no time. We're going to be making a pair of Koch robot arms. These are super low cost arms that use one arm to teach the other arm how to do something. You'll need to 3D print some of the pieces that link the motors together. You could do this with your own 3D printer at home, or if you don't have one, you could go to a local maker space or maybe library, or you could use something like JLC 3DP online and order the parts and have them shipped to you. You could even have them printed out of fancy materials if you want. You'll need some Dynamixel servos. There's a list of these servos on the ARMS webpage, or you can actually buy a kit directly from Robotus, the company that makes Dynamixels. They include all the servos you need, all the little connectors, and also a slightly improved driver board that works a little bit better than the one from Amazon. The screws are really small though, so young kids might need help assembling them, but once they're assembled, kids should be able to interact with them no problem. Once everything is assembled, you can move the leader arm and the follow arm will mimic everything it does. To train the arms, you're gonna need a couple cameras. These are just some cheap USB webcams from Amazon. To make all this work, you're gonna need a computer with an NVIDIA GPU in it. This could be a gaming computer or it could even be a small little edge computer like this. This is a Jetson or a Nano. This is a go-to for me for robotics projects. It's low power, small, and can run a lot of AI directly on it, which is really nice. Just as a sanity check to make sure all this is working, we're gonna record a quick test. I want the arm to pick up this yellow block and set it on top of the blue block. We'll teach the arm by showing it what to do over and over again. Each time we record what we want, we call this an episode. Recording an episode records the joint positions of the arm as well as the video streams. After some training, we'll see how it does. It's trying to find the yellow block. It's pretty clumsy though. All right, it got it. Can't quite stick the landing. This was recorded with only 30 episodes and has a ton of variability in how I laid it out. So this definitely isn't fully trained, but it shows that at least the process is working. We can record, train, and deploy back to the robot. Of course, in the middle of this project, I decided to completely rip apart the lab to make it bigger. There will be a video with a full lab tour coming up in the new year, but for now, it's made this project really complicated. Hey Maddie, yeah. if you had a little robot to play with, what would you want it to do? I would want it to do cool stuff with Lego and like put this girl down the slide like this. Okay, do you think you could teach it to do that? It's really easy to say that the arms learn from an example, but what does that actually mean? Normally when you do a manipulation task like this, you follow three basic steps. The first is perception. Using sensors like cameras, you find what you need to manipulate. Once you know where that is, step two is planning. You need to create a plan of what you want the arm to actually do. 
all the paths that you need it to follow to be able to perform the action that you're trying to do. And once you have your plan, the third step is control. Being able to actually get the arm to do what you want it to do. For what we're doing, this is all going to be done with a single AI network called ACT, or Action Chunking with Transformers. This is going to take recordings from the camera, so visual data, as well as what's called proprioceptic data, which is basically measurements from the arm of where the arm thinks it is. It's going to take all of that data and plan about 90 steps ahead in the path. Planning in chunks allows it to plan around multiple solutions to the same problem. I'll put a link to the paper that was used as a reference for the bulk of this down in the description. Training a network for something like this on my desktop takes about two and a half hours. On the Jetson Orin Nano, it takes over a full day, but it uses a lot less power and costs about a quarter as much. So do you think it's gonna work? No. Why not? Um, cause some, the one project we did with it, it took a couple tries. Mm, okay. So we'll give it a try. We'll see if it goes. Oh, almost not here, but got it. Do you think we can switch the slide for the car and have it put it right in the car? If we put the car in the same spot that the slide was, it might just work. just bounced out. In the future, I want to port all of this training and work to Friedrich, the great big arm in the lab. If you have any suggestions for project that you think a giant arm like this could do using just AI, put those down in the comments down below. If you end up making something like this and training it, make sure you post it on Instagram and tag me. I'm really curious what you guys are working on. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.